there. As you all know from my previous video, if you've watched that where I talked about how I got my agent, I will link it down below if you haven't seen it already. I am planning on talking a lot about querying over the next few weeks. I've got a bunch of topics I want to cover to hopefully help some people to provide a little bit of hope maybe to those who are like in the middle of querying and or like getting ready to query or they've been querying and are starting to give up like it's it's a hard journey so I would like to hopefully provide a little bit of yeah just hope and reassurance and maybe some advice like I say I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination but I did write a query that got me an agent and I actually got a really high full request rate on my query so I like to think that I somewhat know what I'm doing. As with the last video if you would like me to take a look at your query I'm more than happy to do that I will put my email address down below um, just send over your query and I will get to it when I can. But yes today I'm going to be sharing my query letter the query letter that got me an agent and I'm really excited to do this video because I actually watched one of these videos by Will Dean who is one of my absolute favorite authors and it was so helpful to me I actually watched it like 20 times <laughs> but I basically took what he did in his query letter and sort of changed it and made it work for my story so hopefully you can kind of do that with mine too and like I will link his video down below so you can watch his too and you can see the two query letters and kind of use it as a little bit of a base or a template type thing for your query letter and then obviously switch it out and change it up to make it work for you and your book but yeah that's that's the idea and I'm just going to read through the letter I'm going to talk about each section and sort of why I did it the way that I did because I think that's probably going to be the most helpful to you um but yeah let's get started so dear Emily Glenister who is my agent um, quick note on this, I know we're right at the beginning, but address your query to a specific agent. Don't put dear sir, madam, don't put dear agent, don't put dear agency name, put the agent's name. Agents want to know that you have sent the query specifically to them, you're not just blanket sending a bunch of queries to like tons and tons of agents all in one go. So make sure you're putting their name, make sure it's spelt correctly, and I would avoid doing something like Mrs. Glenister or Miss Glenister, like you don't know what prefix they prefer, you don't know if they're married, you don't know if it's even the pronoun that they would like used, just stick to their name, their first name, last name, as it is on their website, like as it's displayed on the website. So dear Emily Glenister, I'd like you to consider representing my psychological suspense novel, The Girl Beyond the Gate, complete at 81,000 words. So you might think that this sentence is a little bit redundant, like of course I want her to represent me, that's why I'm sending her a query letter, but I actually included quite a lot of important information in that one sentence. I included the title of my book, I included the genre, and I also included, included the word count. And those are really important things for an agent. They want to know that the query they're looking at is for a book that they would represent, something that's in the genre they would represent, and also is within like the norms in terms of word count. Word count is actually really important in traditional publishing. It costs a lot of money to print books, and so agents aren't gonna wanna take on a book that's either way longer than what's sort of standard, or way shorter. So do your research trying to figure out what word count is standard for your genre and also for your age group um, and then make sure that your word count meets that sort of standard. By the way if I sound out of breath it's because I am, I'm like seven months pregnant and yeah my lungs are, my lungs are squished. The other thing I included in the sentence which is a really tiny thing but I put that it was complete at 81,000 words and that just lets the agent know that I've finished the book. I'm not just sending them three chapters and then I have nothing else. I have a complete full manuscript, which is also very, very important. You want to make sure you've got a full manuscript before you send out your queries. Okay, moving on. I'm submitting to you not only because I think you'll enjoy my novel and have represented similar authors such as S.V. Leonard, but because I think our personalities will mesh well. I also went to drama school, swear a lot, and think I'm funnier than I am. So this is a little bit of personalisation, um, a lot of people suggest that you personalise your query a little bit to the 
agent that you're sending it to again it just lets them know that you're not just sending a blanket query that you've actually put time and effort into figuring out why they would like your book and you know who they are essentially so I mentioned that she represented SV Leonard because that is a thriller author who she represents and the books are kind of similar to mine I wouldn't say they're comps but they're in a similar vein um, so that was really handy and then also the thing about the personalities it's just something she put on Twitter that I picked up on and it just kind of makes it a little bit more light-hearted talking about like I think I'm funnier than I am and I swear a lot and you know it's not necessarily the most professional approach but I just think it's more I don't know you can kind of gauge their personality a little bit on their social media like Emily I knew was very much she's like quite fun she's got a nice sort of open bubbly personality so that matches very well with who I am so I felt comfortable including that but you don't have to do anything like that but just some kind of personalization to say I've queried you on purpose because I think that you'll like my book specifically I'm not just querying everyone and every single agent in the world so after that intro paragraph I moved into my blurb like talking about the actual book and some people do just go straight into the blurb like they'll do dear agent name and then go straight into it and then do all the like talking about it afterwards personally I felt more comfortable including an intro paragraph um, I just felt like it felt more polite I don't know if that's just the British person in me but I don't know it seemed really odd to me to just be like dear Emily book talking about the book straight away like I felt like it needed some kind of introduction paragraph um, but I mean it's your call this is what I did so not saying it's right <laughs> so this is where I start talking about the book and I put firstly like an elevator pitch which is really important if you can get an elevator pitch into your uh, query which is essentially like two or three sentences to sort of round up the book then that is really really helpful because you're gonna need one eventually anyway like when I went on submission with my agent we used the elevator pitch that I included in my query in the submission package that we then sent to publishers so it's it's something you're going to need anyway and it's really really useful for capturing the attention of an agent you want to think about it like you know when you watch a movie trailer and there'll be that like big booming voice going this winter in cinemas blah, blah. i'm not going to do the voice because that was really embarrassing but you know they'll they'll include like some catchy lines like they'll say um I don't know, two people in a house, what will happen? I, this is terrible, I'm going to include like an example on the screen of one because I can't actually think of one right now. A New York cop John McLean has come to see his wife. Instead, he's going to have to save her. But yeah, if you can include just a couple of like really eye-catching sentences that wrap up your book it's just going to make the agent sort of sit up and go, oh, that sounds good. That sounds like something I want to read. So yeah, try and do that if you can. <laughs> Ignore my terrible examples. So my one said, one child, two women fighting to protect her. Sometimes being right can be deadly. So like I say, it's just three really short, sharp sentences to sort of capture the attention and give a little bit of a feel of what the book's about. And then after the elevator pitch, I included the actual blurb and there are lots of people who suggest lots of different lengths for the blurb. I personally wanted to keep it to one paragraph. I feel like agents are just very, very busy people and you know, quite often agents will be reading queries like on the commute, on the train home. Mm -hmm. And so you just want to keep it as concise as possible. And it's also a really good skill to show that you have, that you can sort of consolidate your story into one paragraph. So I would suggest one to two paragraphs for your blurb. Um, but yeah, again, this is just what I did. So I said, arriving at her new home in the exclusive gated community of Kensington Grove, journalist Jodie Evelyn instantly feels on edge. So there I've got the setup like how the book starts I've got the location the exclusive gated community of Kensington Grove and I've got the main character journalist Jodie Evelyn though it's beautiful something about the community built around a converted psychiatric hospital unnerves her as does her new neighbor Nora Williams and her terminally oh. ill teenage daughter Lacey so there I've got a little bit more about the setting because it's actually a really important part of 
the book is the setting and also the other main characters i would suggest keeping it to two named characters three at a push i mean i included three because there's actually three really really important characters in it but definitely no more than three when a death rocks the community she suspects nora may have been involved and sets out to save lacy from her mother so that's like the inciting incident it's the thing that gets the story started it's the thing that you know turns everything up on its head but as jody delves deeper into nora's shadowy past she is forced to come face to face with her own with devastating consequences so that's just talking a little bit more about like what you can expect from the book and the kind of psychological aspects there so yeah that's the blurb that's sort of how i pitched my book to her um, i think it sounds very much like a psychological thriller which is what i want um, so the best thing I would suggest doing for creating a blurb is looking at back cover copy of books, which is exactly what I did. I looked at all my favourite thrillers and looked at their back cover copy and basically just copied and again changed it to make it work for my book. Copywriting and sales writing is really, really hard. It's, it's definitely a skill to learn, but the more sort of catchy and intriguing you can make this blurb, the better. So then I put, I would position The Girl Beyond the Gate besides novels such as The Babysitter by Phoebe Morgan, Strangers by C.L. Taylor and The Push by Ashley Audrain. So that's three recent comp titles that are not necessarily similar stories but they're like similar tone or they would appeal, like my book would appeal to readers of those books and they're recent so they're books that have come out fairly recently and they've done quite well. I say quite well, don't comp to something like Harry Potter which did absolutely amazingly and like blew everything else off the charts, like don't do that. If you're a thriller writer, don't comp to Richard Osman, like it's just, it sounds cocky so don't do that. Okay and then I finished it off with a bio, so I put, I work full time as a writer and editor for a parenting website and I co-run reading parties with William Shaw. It's an online book reading business where I've had the pleasure of working with authors such as C.L. Taylor, Will Dean, David Fennell, Sarah Pierce, Phoebe Morgan and a variety of publishing industry professionals. I was also runner-up in Outlet Publishing short story competition and I'm being mentored by the wonderful Lauren North. I live in Surrey where I'm raising a little reader of my own. So that I purposely set out to get quite a lot of credits that I could include in my bio. I wanted it to be very clear that I'm invested in the industry and I want to work in the industry. So yeah, it just adds to your professionalism if you can do things like that. And all of that stuff that I mentioned was volunteer work or, you know, competitions that I'd entered. So it's, it's all stuff that you can do. You don't have to pay to be, to have credits. Like you don't have to work in publishing. You don't have to, you know, pay for fancy courses or anything like that. Just do a little bit of volunteer work just so that you can show you've made an effort to be a part of the industry. And then to finish it off, I said, I hope you enjoy the extract and look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience. All the best, Becca Day. And then I included my email address and my phone number. Okay, I'm really sorry, my camera died and I have no idea where my charger is. I can't find it anywhere. So I've switched my phone for the time being. I hope you don't mind. But it's just to say that that was everything. That was the whole query letter. And yeah, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, like I say, it's, it's short and sweet as best as it can be like obviously you do need to include certain information you need to include your blurb you need to include the word count the genre all of that kind of stuff but try and keep it as concise as possible because agents are busy people and you don't want to be rambling on and on and risking boring them like you want to keep it short and snappy and exciting and something that they think oh this sounds really good I must read on so yeah I hope this has been helpful. Like I say, if you would like me to have a look at your query, I'm more than happy to do that. Pop me an email, um, it's all listed down below. And good luck. If you are in the middle of querying or you're getting ready to query, I wish you all the luck in the world and I really hope it works out for you. So yes, I will see you guys soon. Bye.